we go. All right, round two. Let's see if this works, folks. We're waiting on Lauren to join up. First video we have, sorry for the confusion. I'll go back later and delete them so you're not totally confused. I apologize for the wait here. We're just trying to get Lauren um, from Delectable You and uh, uh, Delectable You and her, an author of her own cookbook, watching uh, our live video. So, um, if you watch the first one or you're just tuning in now, it's getting a little crazy, um, but we're trying to get everybody on here so we can watch and, and get Lauren on our show. Hey, there's Lauren. She's watching now. Let's see if I can get her to jump on in. Um, why can't you join our broadcast at this time? That's strange. I want you to, though. Oh, man, that's weird. Why is this not working? Huh. Invite. This is weird, folks. I'm not sure why it's not working so well. Thank you all for tuning in. There's a bunch of you already tuning in. I greatly appreciate it. it says, just as I was tagged, not invited. I just invited you again. Um, I'm sorry, folks. Hey, if you have any suggestions how to make this work, I would greatly appreciate it. Um, oh, that's strange. Okay, so, no, okay. Cancel. Hey, Edgar, thank you for watching. Uh, Manny, Terry, thank you for watching. Jason, uh, Don, um, uh, Rob, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Appreciate it. Um, we're just trying to get Lauren here, and it's it's not working. I don't know why. Why is it not working? Any hints, anybody? All right, we have one more try, and that is to not take you at all, Lauren. We just go for it. I, I think I can just... Well, all right, well, let's... Hold on, we got something here. Uh, Adam, you want to join in? We're waiting on Lauren, Adam, I apologize. Um, so let's see, Lauren. Yeah, um, should we, Lauren, I'll leave it up to you. Would you like to try uh, one more take at the video if I don't take you at all? Or would you like to just walk us through? Up to you, you let me know in the comments here. I apologize for it. Okay, let me try it from your iPhone. That might work better. Yeah, um. That might be one of the issues too, I wonder. That's strange. So, um, in any case, as she's getting her out her iPhone, I apologize for the wait, everyone. Um, awesome. So, Bart, thanks for watching. So, we have Lauren. She's gonna somehow get either on the video or watch it or walk us through how to make a new recipe that she just created called, um, it's a vegan nacho cheese. So, she wrote this book, Accidental Paleo. This came out even after it. It's something new. Mm, something fresh. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. And I, I can't wait to try it. She shared the recipe with me and I'm, I'm pumped to share it all with you. And then you'll walk. All right, and then I'll walk you through. Awesome, thank you, Lauren. I appreciate it. I'm sorry for, whoa. I'm sorry for the mishap here. It's one of the joys of live video. I'm sweating here with all the excitement and energy and nervousness. Why the video's not working? So Stevie, thank you for watching. Mark, thank you for watching. Emily, thanks for coming back and watching. So, um, as we're waiting for her, um, so what we're making are these nachos, right? So, what I did here, I'll show you what I did. I prepped my own tortilla chips. So, instead of buying tortilla chips, you make your own. It's healthy. It's ridiculously easy. Like, seriously, folks. So, for these, all I did is I took tortilla chips that fit for me, right? You can find whole wheat ones, you can get plain ones if you really want, or corn chips, you know, tortillas, soft tortilla shells, and then you cut them up into the size tortillas you want. I cut mine into like six pieces. I place them on a cookie sheet on, a, with a, on top of a cooling rack and space them out in an oven for about uh, 400 degrees for about 10-ish minutes until they start getting brown, right? Depends on what you're using. So that's an option. All right, let's see. We have Ashley. We're going to prove you. Thank you, Manny. I appreciate it. We'll see. Hopefully, we got you set here. Hopefully, hopefully. I approved it, Ash uh, Lauren. We're, we're working on Sorry, I'm seeing a bunch of names here. Awesome. I love all these people joining us. I'm trying. Oh, oh, I hear something. Hey, there's Lauren. Hey, you? sorry, you're sweating in the kitchen. It's part of the deal. Wow. Hey, I'm so happy you're able to join us today and be here. I'm sorry for this whole mishap of live videos. 
it's technology. It's okay. I think everybody's okay, right? Oh, I everybody's think everybody's okay. Good time. It's the joy of these live videos. That makes them fun, right? Totally. They're unpredictable. <laughs> it's like life. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we could edit all this stuff out, but what's the fun of that? Let's just keep it in there. This is this is real life. This is more exciting anyway. Exactly. Well, Lauren, I am as I said earlier, I'm pumped to have you joining us today and sharing your recipes with with all of us. I shared a little bit about you that you know that you have the blog Delectable You. You wrote your awesome new book, Accidental Paleo. Congratulations on a book release. That's huge. So congrats. Oh look at that. Thank you. So beautiful. Y'all need to get yourself a copy of it. Look at that. It's gorgeous. You need to get Thank you. Your own. So Tell us, a, I, I said that a little bit, but tell us about you. Tell us about like what got you into cooking and writing the book and just share a little bit about you before we head over to this recipe. Sure. Um, what got me into cooking was uh, the discovery of food as medicine, accidentally, actually. Hmm. I am from Montreal and I moved to Los Angeles in 2008 and uh, I used to drink a lot of milk. And I gained 10 pounds out of nowhere when I moved to LA. And I was like, that's weird. Yeah. And I didn't know anything of it. And then I got a cold a few months later. And I was like, I'm just going to stop having milk and cheese, which was like basically all I ate. Uh, and, and in a week, I lost the 10 pounds. Just from, so you lost 10 pounds just from not drinking milk and cheese? Yeah, that's the only thing that changed. That's it. So oh. before, before, that happened i all basically like i didn't like vegetables i only ate like hamburgers hot dogs cheese 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 pizza milk cereal cookies stuff like that and then when that happened i was like you know that's interesting i'm gonna look more into this so i um started reading more and watching more and more movies about the food industry, all facets of it, and I didn't like what I was seeing. But I also didn't like the resources that were available. So what I was finding is that people were saying, like, eat less meat, eat less dairy, but nobody was telling me what to eat instead. And I grew up with, like, milk does the body good, that's what you have, and meat is the staple part of your, like, every single plate. So... I had to learn and teach myself how to feed myself differently. And that's how this whole thing started 10 years ago. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, I grew up here in Wisconsin, and, and now you're in Malibu, California, I believe, right? And mm -hmm. I, I grew up the same way. It was, you know, you had your, your carbs at dinner, your protein and veggies, and milk was at every meal. Cheese was a staple and, and everything we do. And... Although I've been going on my fitness journey and, and eating healthy now for a number of years, milk and dairy is just one of those things that I, I find really hard to give up. So I'm, I'm working at limiting it and trying to find ways of making it happen, but it's so hard because it's so delicious all the time um, for me. So other mm -hmm. yogurt, you know, I've, I've gone away from, I barely have milk at all, unless it's a Greek yogurt or maybe a, some cheese here and there, but that's pretty much what I've limited it down to. Um, uh, cottage cheese is one of my favorite things I have in the morning, but you know, those little mm -hmm. things I got to work on. Interesting. That's great. Well, awesome. So, yeah. So how did you write this book, the accidental paleo can, there's a lot of confusion around the word paleo, uh, amongst fitness people and people who aren't fit. Can you clarify that up, up for us and what, what your interpretation is, is of it and all that? Yeah, well, I like the way that you said your interpretation of it, because I think for every diet, there is an interpretation. Uh, there are many interpretations. And where paleo is concerned, the, the bottom line is people who eat paleo eat the way our ancestors ate before we had agriculture. So uh, we didn't have the dairy. We might have had raw dairy, but nothing, none of the processed stuff that we have now. We hunted meat. We gathered nuts and seeds. Uh, we ate fruits and vegetables. That's that's what we had. Now, paleo has a lot of different arms. There are people who are ketogenic, so they basically have like, I think it's up to 30 or 50 grams of carbs in a day, and they won't eat more than that. So the majority of their diet is made up of meat, protein, eggs, and um, nuts, seeds, vegetables, but uh, like no carbs. There are progressive paleos who will actually have some legumes and some carbs, but like healthy carbs like quinoa, 
or um, rice or like ancient grains, but not a lot. So there's like a gray area where everybody I think does agree is there's no dairy. There's no refined processed anything, no refined sugars, no refined um, wheat, uh, nothing like that. So you, you eat foods as close to their whole form as possible. Where I came in with the accidental paleo is that it's, it's a mostly plant-based vegetarian paleo, which was like confusing because I thought, well, I'm mostly plant-based vegetarian. I didn't think I was also paleo, but I actually don't eat a lot of carbohydrates. I don't eat a lot of legumes. I don't eat a lot of grains. And the majority of my diet is made up of vegetables, honestly, vegetables, uh, healthy fats like coconut milk, coconut oil, avocados, um, and so I was like, oh my gosh, I am accidentally paleo and I didn't even know it. And I bet I am not the only one. So I need to share these recipes with the world. Oh my gosh, that's a great story for that one. And understanding how you came to it and a little bit more about the paleo is just fantastic. I didn't realize all the different facets. I'm sure there's there's other ones too to it, just like any diet, right? It's, it's finding what works for you and your body and your goals and all that stuff so you can live a happy, healthy lifestyle. Uh, for you, and mm -hmm. Edgar, I see your comment. Giving up dairy—that's hard. I, I'm struggling with it, and uh, I'm not sure I'll get there totally. But it'd be a good thing to experiment with and see how my body reacts to it. Definitely. Well, and the thing is, like, you got to listen to your body. Some people are fine with dairy. Some people are not. So if your body is like totally fine, you don't have any symptoms, then eh, maybe just decrease it a little bit because for other reasons. But. Right. Um, I mean, I had symptoms that I was also somebody who ate cheese and milk every single day, three times a day. So I was the same. I was like, there's no way, like, don't even talk to me about giving up dairy. That's, I'm not even, I'm not even going to listen to you. And now I don't have it. Like I, if I go to my husband's from New York, so, and I'm from Montreal and we're like the pizza capitals of much of Canada and the U S right. Pretty much. Delicious. So, like, mm -hmm. Right. I understand there's a rivalry, but so I'll have a slice of pizza when I'm there, but like, it used to be like, I have the whole piece. Now I'm like a few bites and then my stomach starts to hurt. Oh. Okay. Let's go. So I'm, I'll have it in, in extreme circumstances where the foodie in me takes over, but you actually can give up dairy more easily than you think. But it will happen over time. It's not going to happen overnight. It didn't for me. Okay, that's good to know. I, I appreciate the advice with that. For me and for everyone watching, that's that's huge. So thank you very much. Uh, yeah, of course. So your book, The Accidental Paleo, where can folks pick this up uh, and get their own copy of these amazing recipes that are in there? Amazon, baby. Amazon's like the place for everything. So yeah, Amazon.com, Amazon.ca. If you happen to be watching in Canada, you can do Amazon or Indigo as well. And then in the U.S., Barnes & Noble stores carry it as well. Not all, but some. That's awesome. Oh, very exciting. Yeah, Amazon has everything in the world. That's where my books are. And I don't know, it's just amazing that they're out there. Well, should mm -hmm. we get started on this recipe and see how we make a vegan nacho cheese. I know you shared me this recipe, but, and I know it's going to be delicious, but I'm really curious about it. So w walk us through. How do we make this thing? Okay, this is pretty apropos. Like, we did not plan on talking about dairy in the introduction here. So not at all. It's great. It, yeah, so it kind of fits in beautifully. So um, I'm already working on my second cookbook, which is all vegan and gluten-free. And I just tested this recipe two weeks ago and it's delicious. So what we're gonna use as the base to make it creamy and gooey is boiled russet potatoes and carrots. So the carrots add, mm -hmm. let's see. So yeah, so very specifically, um, I don't know if you have one of these, you can go to Amazon and get, this is a kitchen scale that I have. Um, I did go to culinary school and one of the things you learn there is the whole cup, tablespoon, teaspoon, those kinds of standard measurements, mm -hmm. those you would find in cookbooks. But in a chef's kitchen, you will find things in grams or pounds and ounces oh. because it's very specific. Because, you know, like your coconut flour, one batch of coconut flour uh, might be um, more moist or less moist than the next batch. So, for example, if you had a cup of coconut flour for your baked good and you measured it, it might be like 150 grams. The next batch, the same cup, might only be 140 grams. Oh, I so, knew that. That's interesting. 
Hmm. Never. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's it's fine. Like in general, baking and and cooking, you don't really need a kitchen scale. But for some things, especially for baking, actually, and especially if you're getting into vegan, gluten free baking, um, this is like a godsend. And I think it was like twenty dollars. So the reason I'm talking about it is because the uh, measurement of potatoes and boiled carrots in this recipe is specifically a hundred. I think it's. Let me see my recipe. This is my tattered. This is this is what became the book. Nice. Um, Fifty-five grams of carrots, which works out to about a third of a cup. So if you're watching and you're like, I don't have a kitchen scale, don't worry, just do a third of a cup, um, and then 190 grams of peeled russet potatoes. And all you're gonna do with those is boil them until they're soft. That's awesome. And and so Laura and I chatted a little bit before this video. She sent me the recipe and a couple of directions so we can get it prepped beforehand. So I did that. I have um, the potatoes and carrots all boiled, uh, or softened up here, boiled in water, softened up, ready to roll. I chopped them up, um, in not huge chunks, but not super small. And so, softened rock and roll. Uh, one question I have for you, Lauren, is that you're very specific on russet potatoes. Like, I'm a huge fan of red potatoes. Why, why russet as opposed to red or, or other types of potatoes? Is there a reason? Just, just for the starch. Oh because the starch is what's going to give that gummy dairy that we don't have in there. Dairy is very mucousy. That's kind of gross, but that's just the truth. Dairy is very mucousy and that's what makes it gooey. Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Right. So the russet potatoes have a lot of starch in them. So that's why I use them. Now there's no reason why you can't try it with other potatoes too, mm -hmm. but just know it might not be the same. That's okay. Experiment. That's have fun with life. Exactly. So try it if you like red potatoes. Okay. Try it with red potatoes. And if you get the texture or texture you like, then great. And keep using them. If not, maybe you do half russet, half red, or all russet. Okay, that makes sense. Perfect. So, mm -hmm. um, all right, what else do we need? So we got the potatoes, carrots, what else? So then in terms of ingredients, we're going to do macadamia nuts. All right. And now if you don't, if you don't, like macadamia nuts I know are pricey. So if you don't want those, you could do cashews, but you know what? Cashews are starting to outweigh the cost of macadamia nuts. Really? They're starting to be more expensive. Yeah. So, but you do want it to be some kind of creamy white nut. And I think macadamia nuts are kind of awesome. I, I love macadamia nuts. And you said, I believe a quarter cup or so yeah. of macadamia mm -hmm. nuts. I'm using the Simple Truth dry roasted. It's hard to see if it's all light, but these are sea salted. I tried looking for unsalted. That's when I tried getting like all the nuts that I buy and couldn't find them, so I just settled on salt. Okay. Figured it'd work. I use these ones. These are um, salted as well. They're from Hawaii, and I get them at the Costco. Nice. Yeah, they don't always have them, but they're delicious. So when they have them, I stock. <laughs> okay, so macadamia nuts. Then what? Uh, you need two cloves of garlic. All right. You need a, the juice of half a lemon. Now, so I chopped up my garlic, um, so it just blends up a little easier. And then for lemon, I did, don't have a fresh lemon, but I have this lemon juice. Um, it's not as good as a real lemon. It's not quite as fresh, quite obviously. But I'm hoping that this will work out just fine. That'll be fine. Okay. Fresh is better, but that will do. Yeah, I always try to get the freshest stuff possible, but it just didn't work out. We had a, you're lucky you're in Malibu. I don't know what the temperature is. It's right around freezing here. We had about 20 inches of snow within two days, so... I'm stuck to what we have here at the house. It's okay. It's okay. My family's in Montreal and Toronto. I know all about the weather. <laughs> um, okay. So then um, uh, I like this Celtic sea salt. I get this. You can get this at any health food store and actually probably on Amazon. But any sea salt will do. Nice. Okay. So you're going to get about a teaspoon, half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of that. All right. And then what else do I have here? Okay. Vinegar. I like using this plum vinegar. Okay. So plum, plum vinegar. vinegar. Where do you get plum vinegar? Um, any health food store, Whole Foods. I got this from Whole Foods. Probably Amazon. Um, but if you don't have this, don't worry. Just use, you could use apple cider vinegar. You could use champagne vinegar. You could use white vinegar. You could use whatever. It's just going to give that nice tang. But I like this one because it's also a little bit sweet. Nice. So, so what right now is this sherry vinegar. Um, I have white vinegar as well, but I thought this might be a little nicer for it. I wasn't sure, but thought I could. Yeah, no, okay. 
Yep. And let me see. Salt. Da, 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 da. Um, oh, I got to get my coconut oil. So grab some coconut oil. All right. And then some water. And some water. Perfect. So coconut. I'm going to get my coconut oil. Got the coconut oil. Got to go in my cupboards, folks. It's all good. I'll be right back. Coconut oil and then sea salt. I forgot. And water, you said, right? Perfect. And water. Yeah. So this coconut oil, I just get organic coconut oil wherever possible. Yep. Um, this I also get at Costco because I bake a lot. So I just have it in big, giant quantities. Nice. Okay. All right. And then you drop a high power. All right. I'm ready to go. What do we do? We have all the ingredients set. Put all of the ingredients in a high powered blender so, all right. so that you can see me. So, so it's, it's good if, you're, um, if your potatoes and carrots are still hot because then it's like that hot queso mm. that you're used to having on nachos. So put that in the blender. Potatoes and carrots. Yep. Candy nuts. Garlic. Mm hmm. Oh. Steal one. Okay. Garlic. Okay. Lemon. Lemon. Mm -hmm. If you're using fresh lemon, I just use my hand. You can get one of those fancy juicers, but my hand works really well too. Nice. Yeah, and make sure you don't get seeds in there, folks. That wouldn't be good. Yeah, no. Not good. Okay. Now, we use salted nuts, so you don't need to add as much salt. I love salt. So um, I'm going to add a half a teaspoon. And if when I taste it in the end, it's not salty enough, then I'll add more. You can always add more salt, but you can't take it away. Exactly. I always start. That's what I do. I barely add salt to anything I make and then add it in at the end, unless it's something yeah. Special, but. Well, and salt brings out the dominant flavor in anything you're making. So if you happen to make like a soup or something, you're like, it's really bland. Add a pinch of salt, stir, taste, and keep doing that until all of a sudden you'll be like, wow, I can taste the flavor of whatever it's supposed to be. Nice. Okay, that's good to know. Cool. Okay, one teaspoon of umi plum vinegar or whatever vinegar you have. Teaspoon or tablespoon? Teaspoon. Oh, that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then we're going to add two tablespoons of coconut oil. Two tablespoons of coconut oil. Now, for those of you who watch the Jones and Four uh, live cooking show often, you know that I rarely measure things out unless I'm baking. So this is going to yeah. fix it up a little bit. I want to make sure it's nice and nice and creamy so we do justice to the recipe so. yeah i don't really measure either everything is by sight but the first time you're doing a recipe do it according to the measurements and then make it your own yeah, i figure cooking is a way to experiment have some fun baking a little less forgiving a lot less forgiving <laughs> okay so now let's start with about two tablespoons of water all right and then if it's not enough, then you can just add more. Because basically, you know what the queso, the cheese, the nacho cheese is supposed to look like. Right. That's what we're looking for. So it's going to get really noisy. So we should probably do it at the same time. All right. On your mark. You ready? I'm ready. Get set. Blend.
How's it going? It's going pretty well. So my blender's an older blender, and uh, we're we're working on it. A little bit of water here, there, mixing it around. It's all okay. there, almost. Okay. Oh, wait. She's in it. It's crazy. No. Now you have to do the taste test. Cork. First of the finger, because it's for me. Mmm. Oh, that garlic adds a nice little uh, bite to it. That's just, oh, that's perfect. Now, I will say, you know, I'm going to do it with the chip here because I have my chip set already. It's not. Uh huh. Um, it's not necessarily like cheesy like you would think nacho cheese because, you know, you think of the stuff that is I do that comes out of a bag and that is like pure plastic for you. It's so much better than that. It's different, but so much tastier. So we'll get a, a big bu bunch of it out here on the chip so you can see a little closer to the camera. If it focused. So you and you see how it's dripping? Yeah. I don't know if y'all can see that. Like it drips cheese. Look at that. That's because of the starch of potato. Mm. Mm. I mean, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do something different. So it's like a dip for chips. That's cheese-ish texture. Different. So just know that going in. But, oh, my God, flavor explosion in your mouth. This is, this. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm, just, I'm double dipping because I'm at home. Mm. That's okay. Now, I want you to know, so a lot of us have trouble digesting corn. So thankfully, if you're one of those people and you're like, great, I have nacho cheese, but I still can't have corn. There are two companies and I've only got one right now, but this is called Siete and they make um, chia coconut cassava flour nacho chips. Nice. Okay. So, and then there's another one called the Real Coconut by Daniela Hunter. And those are the same kind of chips without chia seeds and i love them and then another idea is to do plantain chips oh nice plantain chips i wear and those are just at your whole food store you get those or amazon whole food trader joe's amazon nice yeah was, and we were chatting beforehand about how to make the chips i know for me i'm just using my soft tortilla shells and and bake them in the oven at, at 400 degrees for about um, 10 minutes or so, but there's a lot of different ways to do it. I think um, you mentioned before about using like sweet potatoes. You can make a sweet potato chip by slicing your sweet potatoes thin, putting them kind of on the same idea, like a cookie sheet type idea. I'd like yep. putting mine on a cooling rack on a cooking sheet and then bake them at 400 or so degrees until they get nice and crispy. Put a little oil on them, spray some oil on it, um, like um, coconut oil with a little salt if you want. Boom, you got yourself some tasty and sturdy chips. And you can also mix and match. I'll, I'll do, um, I took a plate and I did two different types of sweet potatoes, purple oh, nice. and white or purple and orange. I just made a little ring on the outside of the plate, alternating colors, and then put the chips in the middle, put the sauce on. I actually baked some broccoli, put that on there, threw some green onions on there. It was pretty good. <laughs> Uh, that, that sounds incredible. So you can mix, match, have fun. And really, that sounds like the perfect cover for your next cookbook. Just saying. Just saying. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, I've got a lot more, though. So we'll see. We'll see what makes the cut. I mean, the, the pictures you have in your book now and the recipes are incredible. And I really can't thank you enough for being on the show and sharing this recipe with all of my viewers. And I'm just I'm so incredibly grateful. And thank you for taking the time and sharing it with us. Sure. Thank you for having me. Well, of course. Well, we look forward to hopefully having you on again. And I'm going to send all of my viewers to tell you to get the Accidental Paleo. It's incredible. You need to pick up the book. It's on Amazon. And where, where else can they find you, Lauren? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram. Lauren Lobley is my Instagram. Uh, and then my blog, delectableyou.com. And I have YouTube cooking videos as well. Um, just Lauren Lobley on YouTube. Awesome. That's perfect. 
Well, folks, thank yeah. you very much. I truly appreciate it. We got some comments here. We'll get to them. Emily said, yummy. It's amazing. You need to make it. Um, we have um, Stephanie looks delicious. And thank you for the non um, corn chip ideas. Definitely worth a try. Uh, definitely go and try. Definitely should. Fantastic. Carrie, um, zucchini chips might be good. Two, vegetables of a carb. I've done that. Delicious. They're not as sturdy, um, but mm -hmm. super delicious as well. Um, and with a dip like that, they'll work great. Um, Emily, I have the book. Awesome, Emily. Yeah. Um, thanks for joining us. Love that's great. Well, thank you. thank you everyone for joining us, Lauren. Thank you for joining us. Um, have a wonderful day. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing when your next next cookbook uh, gets released. Let us know, and we'll we'll be sure to check it out and get us all all of us over on it. Will do. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Thank you. You too. Good night. Thank you, everyone. We'll catch you all later.